Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. One of the most well-known beverages in the world also comes with multiple health benefits, and I'm certainly not talking about drinking soda. I am talking about tea, and we know that Different teas have been widely consumed throughout the world, and we've all heard about the many different health benefits that go along with consuming tea. So today I want to talk about green tea and the polyphenols contained within green green tea. That's the powerful antioxidants that are in green tea and how that can be beneficial when we think about diabetes and often when we are talking in the setting of green tea, we talk about its powerful antioxidants and how it's working to support cellular function and fend off oxidative stress and free radicals, which at the end of the day, anyone who has diabetes knows that all of their cells are under constant assault from that elevation in blood glucose. So it makes sense that the green tea would have positive effects at that cellular level. So that is what I want to focus in on today. So I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and I want to talk about a study that just came out um, a about a year ago and was published in the British Medical Journal. And they were looking at the consumption of tea. So both green tea and black tea. And even in this study, they were looking at the consumption of coffee as well. But the the main takeaway was the amount of tea that they found that people were drinking had a direct association in overall lowered risk of all-cause mortality. So let me kind of break this down for you. We know that people who have type 2 diabetes are more prone to circulatory diseases, to different cancers, to fractures, kidney disease, dementia. And we know that despite the fact that there's all of these different medications out there that target the blood glucose, so when you think about all the different diabetes drugs, We also know that there has to be some lifestyle modifications, and we also have to look at the diet. So this is where the heart of this study really comes into play. Because what they found was that those who consumed high amounts of green tea, black tea, as well as coffee, did much better than those who did not, those who were turning more towards the sugary uh, beverages, the the soft drinks, and the, the different juices and things along that line. So in this, they tracked close to 5,000 men and women who had type 2 diabetes. And they they tracked them over the course of five years. And they had them fill out these food intake questionnaire. So it was food and beverages. And they were looking to see how much green tea, how much black tea, how much coffee that they consumed each and every single day. And through doing this data pooling, what they were able to determine after the the five-year tally on this was that those who consumed the highest amount, so like four cups of tea per day, had a significantly lowered risk of all-cause mortality. So this is why I wanted to talk about green tea today when it comes to how it's actually working when we think about those who are dealing with things such as diabetes. Now, certainly we know one of the main problems in diabetes is that elevation of oxidative stress and heightened levels of inflammation. So we know that green tea extract has been shown, this was published well over a decade ago in the Nutrition Journal, that three months worth of supplementation of roughly 380 milligrams or 375 milligrams of green tea extract every single day for three months had a significant impact, positive impact on blood pressure, on serum 
lipid levels, so that's your cholesterol, on blood glucose levels, on the total antioxidant status in the body, on lowering markers for inflammation, including tumor necrosis factor alpha, C-reactive protein levels, all came down. In this study, three months, giving people green tea extract, about 375 milligrams per day, and at the end of three months, they had this complete shift. So when it came to their insulin resistance, that had improved. So the green tea helped to enhance insulin sensitivity. When it came to blood pressure, their blood pressure helped to normalize. Their lipid levels improved in those markers for inflammation. And then, of course, the antioxidant status. And all of these things are very important because when you look at the complications that go along with diabetes, we know that there are many. And the management of diabetes to this day is still inadequate. The average diabetic, once they're told that they have diabetes, they're given their first medication, which means the second and third medication are probably right around the corner. They're told to avoid white bread and don't put sugar on everything. But other than that, they're not really given a playbook as to how to manage this disease, which is a really big public health problem because most doctors don't recognize how nutrients that we take in from our foods can be either healing and helping or can be incredibly harmful and hurtful to the body. So in the Journal of Antioxidants, they were looking at the effect and the mechanism of how tea could be utilized for the prevention and management of diabetes, as well as diabetic complications. In doing this study, they found that tea was inversely associated with the risk of diabetes. So what does that mean? That the higher consumption of tea was linked to less likely of developing diabetes. So you take diabetics and you say, okay, well, they're already diabetic. What if we give them green tea? And what they found, once again, was this help to support insulin sensitivity. So the insulin was more responsive to rises in glucose. It helped to scavenge free radicals. It was actually protecting the beta cells, which is what releases the insulin. And throughout this study, looking at all the epidemiological and the clinical studies, they were able to find that, indeed, tea really has all of these many protective benefits because of those bioactive compounds, that EGCG, the epigallocatechingalate. So it's not just an antioxidant. It is working to support the liver. It is working to support the heart. We know that it helps to support proper thermogenesis, so even for fat burning. So there are studies where they show it as having anti-obesity properties to it for helping to support and play nice-nice with our microbiome. So the enhancement and improvement of the intestinal flora. So all of these different ways in which the green tea and the EGCG has been studied and shown to be incredibly powerful when it comes to those who are dealing with diabetes. And when you look at the specific studies, and this is where this is incredibly impressive, this study out of the Journal of Antioxidants, they looked at all the different diabetic complications. So they looked at EGCG studies in diabetic nephropathy. So this is a big problem when we think about the kidneys and the damage done because of glycation. And they found green tea having this protective effect against diabetic nephropathy. Then they looked at diabetic cardiovascular disease and the different complications that come about with those who have diabetes. And they found that the T polyphenols were actually helping to improve myocardial glycolipid energy metabolism. So what does this mean? It was helping to support energy. At the same time, it was helping to downregulate inflammation. Very powerful information that we know about EGCG. Then you look at diabetic neuropathy. So that's the neurodegeneration that is brought on because of glycation and oxidative stress that creates 
all of those problems when it comes to the loss of sensation in the feet, for example. And we find that the EGCG is working through multiple different mechanisms. When we think about the eyes and diabetic retinopathy brought on by glycation and oxidative stress, those advanced glycation end products, we see the studies where EGCG has been shown to protect the retina. I mean, there's so many different studies out there that are using green tea and looking at diabetics. So when we look at diabetic liver issues. So we think about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, for example, and we see once again where that green tea can potentiate its benefits once again. So study after study continue to show this. In the Journal of Integrative Medicine Research, they did a wonderful job of really highlighting how green tea can support the health of those who have type 2 diabetes. And in doing that particular study, what they found was that green tea extracts, those powerful catechins, the EGCG, is been shown to prevent so many of those complications that go along with diabetes. So we think about what we do each and every single day. And this is why I wanted to talk about green tea in the setting of diabetes specifically, because we've got some really wonderful formulations, the green tea HX capsules, which is a combo of green tea along with black tea. And then we have our green tea TX, which is a great way to get a powerful amount of those powerful catechins into your daily routine. So get that EGCG on board and make sure that you are adhering to a healthy lifestyle and adhere to the Mediterranean diet. So that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you.